Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're just going to do a very, very simple little venison tartlet. Pre-dinner drinks, canapes, that sort of thing. Um, it's a delightful little recipe and it takes seconds. Um, Peter, my son, my youngest son, is a renowned chef. Uh, he took part in the Gordon Ram Ramsay Scholarship and was a runner-up. Um, he won the, the Nestle Talk Door Championship of, of the whole of the UK against all the other colleges, catering colleges, um, with a team of five or six people as well. So he does know how to cook. At least that's what he keeps telling me. Now what we've chosen here is just a strip of loin off a raw deer. Um, he's now just seasoning it up. Hopefully he's got a pan on which is going to get very, very hot. Oh, it is. I can see the oil moving. Now this recipe works better with a really, really fresh piece of steak, cooked um, medium rare. How long do you think it will take to do? Four minutes. Four minutes, there you go. Right, while that's doing on one side, Peter's taken some cranberry sauce and he's just putting a little half a teaspoon into the bottom of each of the uh, tartlet dishes. You don't have to use cranberry, you could use blackcurrant jelly, any, any jam would do at all. I think this is one of those jobs we should have actually done like Blue Peter and had them already done. <laughs> but you don't want to do it too, if you're doing it for a dinner party, you don't want to do it too soon because the pastry will then go soggy. Um, however, the meat could be cooked and ready to go and left to go cold before you actually wanted to do it, so it would make it a lot faster. Incidentally, the recipe calls for a little bit of oil to cook your meat. Whatever meat you're going to use, as I say, in this case it's venison loin, but it could equally be haunch steaks or even fillet. It wouldn't make any... In fact, fillet's a really good one for this because on the, on the deer, it's a very, very small piece of meat. Um, and as you're only using small slices, the fillet is ideal. Um, as I say, we're using the cranberry uh, jelly, um, some sour cream and some chives. That's them all done. Right, now Peter's already sorted himself out some long pieces of chive to use as a garnish. And he's chopping up some chive here to mix in with the sour cream to add into the dish itself. Smile at the camera. Watch your fingers. <laughs> yes, it is a very sharp knife. I'll smile, you could. <laughs> right, never go. Um, Peter's just making sure the meat is seared and sealed all the way around, so every edge will have a nice little crisp coating on it. And again, unfortunately, my, chef is, my, my son is a professional chef, so his fingers are made of asbestos. Don't try that at home. <laughs> Right, 
It's suggested as well that you leave all the meat after you've cooked it for the same length of time to rest as you've actually cooked it. This has been three or four minutes in the pan. Put it to one side and leave it to rest for three or four minutes. The meat relaxes and it absorbs its juices back into itself um, and it also finishes the cooking process. So, is it time for the jig? Uh, probably. Right, come on then. Incidentally, on the table on the other side there, they're, they're all the recipes we've done this last few days. Um, they are all family favourites. Uh, we, we do them quite a lot. Because um, venison, you can do anything with. Um, anything you would use any red meat for, you can substitute it for venison. This is another one of those pauses where it would be handy to have a blue Peter tray under the bench. Right, now what we need is some real, real thin slices of, of the venison for each one of the, um, the tartlets. And again, in order to do this, you need a really sharp knife. Somebody's going to be unhappy, I don't think we've got enough. <laughs> venison's been sliced, he's just actually twisting it up with his fingers. Just makes it look a little bit pretty and then just throwing a piece into the pastry case. Now for the sour cream. of the cream you use is exactly the same as the, um, the jelly or the jam you've put in on the bottom. So if you use half a teaspoon, half a teaspoon full of the cream too. And then the final touch is just a little tiny amount of the, uh, the chopped chives over the top. And then it gets really chef and you put the garnish on.
and they go perfect starter for a, um, a pre-evening pre meal drinks. Just something to go on the side, little nibbles. Have you finished? There we go.